So as I've been doing at the start of pretty much every Diablo 4 season, I want to start out using a Poison Landslide Druid build to see how strong it is. And with Season 6, I think this build is actually really strong in the starting Torment tiers. So Torment 1 and 2. Now I do think this build will also start to fall off in Torment 3 and 4 until you get really optimized. But I do think once you get really optimized, a build like this is going to be really strong deep in to the end game and it's generally a really fun build. Keep in mind the build I'm going over in this video is not going to be anywhere close to being complete but it's still a very fun build and you can get this build working pretty easily without needing to farm any super specific items. Now if you want to use the version of this build that's a bit better I am currently using a handful of different uniques. God Slayer's crown which just pulls everything together makes them take a bit more damage. This is absolutely not required. If I was completely optimal I would have a Harlequin Crest there and then I would have Tyrael's Might for the chest piece but outside of that we're also using the Fist of Fate primarily because this gives you a massive lucky hit chance increase that'll help us with our ability resetting and then one of the biggest ones is the Mjolnik Ring which is while Cataclysm is active you deal up to 100% increased multiplicative damage and with some of the other effects we have in this build we can have Cataclysm up almost 100% of the time that's a massive damage increase as well but as mentioned if you're in say Torment 1 or Torment 2. And if you're not trying to take this build into say Torment 3 or Torment 4, you don't really need any uniques. You just use some additional easy to get legendary aspects and you're still going to be strong enough to do the early parts of the end game. But that brings us to our skill tree, starting off with Storm Strike. This will give us some damage reduction anytime we use it, but the primary reason we're using this is to get resets of our other skills that ties into our capstone and one of our legendary aspects. Upgrade one has a chance to immobilize enemies, which does actually help quite a bit with some of our other effects. Then we're putting five points in a landslide. This is our main damaging ability, but you don't put this on your bar because it's going to be cast by other abilities. Upgrade one, landslide can immobilize enemies. Upgrade two, when you immobilize enemies or damage boss, you get a Terramote. Terramotes are consumed by Landslide to be guaranteed crits and deal more damage. Then we're going down one point into Earthen Bulwark. This is going to be constantly reset, so it's just a big barrier of 45% of our max life. Upgrade one makes us unstoppable for another way to become unstoppable. Then a Poison Creeper, which is going to be a very important part of this build because this is how we both poison enemies and proc more landslides. Upgrade one increases the duration of the immobilize. Upgrade two gives us an increased crit chance against poison enemies. If you're trying to stay with this build till further into the end game and you have better items, so that means more crit, you can take out the second upgrade and instead increase the duration of the poison creepers effect then we're going down we're taking a hurricane this is primarily to proc other effects upgrade one slows enemies upgrade two makes enemies deal less damage then we're taking trample this will make us unstoppable primary reason we're using this is because this is the other way in which we cast a bunch of landslides then we're going down for our ultimate we're taking cataclysm this is obviously going to be to proc a bunch of additional effects cataclysm is actually really good damage on its own as well upgrade one increases its duration upgrade two it makes everything vulnerable Vulnerable. And because we can have Cataclysm up almost 100% of the time, we pretty much don't have to worry about Vulnerable because Cataclysm pretty much has it covered. And that brings us to our passives. One, it's a Heart of the Wild to get three into Wild Impulses. Our core skills cost more but deal more damage and we don't actually use any resource, so this is just free damage. One, into Predatory Instinct for three into Iron Fur. Damage reduction, while in Werewolf and three seconds after, our Trample puts us into Werewolf. Our Trample puts us into Werebear and it'll constantly reset, so we'll have this damage reduction a lot of the time. Three into into Intentional Fortitude, increased resistances is always good. Three into Vigilance, we get damage reduction after using a defensive, and Earthen and Bullock will constantly reset, so we'll have that DR for most of the time. Then we're going down, we're putting three into Endless Tempest, increase the duration of our Cataclysm and Hurricane, primarily for Cataclysm. You can also remove these points once you get a bit more geared, and once you get to the point where you don't need the increased duration on Cataclysm to have it up 100% of the time. And then we have Bad Omen, which is another lucky hit, up to a 30% chance when dealing damage to a vulnerable, immobilized, or stun enemy to hit them with a lightning bolt. Then we're going down, one into Crushing Earth, our Earth skills deal more damage to CC's enemies. To get one into Safeguard, crit strikes with Earth skills, fortify it for 3% of your max life. This will give us a majority of our fortify. And then a Stone Guard, while you have fortify for over 50% of your max life, your Earth skills deal more damage. Then one into Neurotoxin, to get three into End Venom, Unicorn companions deal increased crit strike damage against poison enemies. That's why Poison Creeper is also so important. If you can get more 
rolls of this on your amulet, that's going to be very strong. Then we're going down three into Catastrophe. You deal increased damage for eight seconds after casting an ultimate skill. And we constantly reduce the cooldown of our Cataclysm. So this will be up. We're getting a ton from our unique ring. So anytime we pop our ult, massive damage. Three into Defiance. Nature skills do increase damage to elites. Three into Natural Disaster. Earth skills deal more damage to Vulnerable. Storm skills deal more damage to CC'd. Then Resonance. Nature skills do increase damage. Triple this if an Earth skill is the next cast after a Storm skill and vice versa. And that's basically how this build plays in general anyway. Then three into Defensive Posture. Increase the amount of Fortify you gain by 15% and you gain 9% damage reduction while Fortified. Fortify already gives you damage reduction. So this is just more on top. And then for our Capstone, we have Nature's Fury. Casting an Earth skill has a 35% chance to trigger a free Storm skill of the same category and vice versa. And this combined with one of our legendary aspects is how we constantly reset our abilities. And then next up, we have our Spirit Boons, Wariness to take reduced damage from Elites. We have Avian Wraith for increased critical strike damage. Swooping attacks for increased attack speed. This is primarily so we can cast our Storm Strike faster, which will give us more resets. Pack Leader, which are lucky at critical strikes, have up to a 25% chance to reset the cooldown of your companion skills. This is very important. Poison Creep is basically our main damaging ability. And then finally, Calm Before the Storm, another lucky hit. Nature Skills have up to a 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate by two seconds. The main thing we want here is to have Cataclysm up 100% of the time. And then going into our Mercenaries, you can pretty much use whatever you want. Obviously, if you're playing with other players, you're only going to have your Reinforcement. If you're playing solo, you have your Mercenary and Reinforcement. You can use whatever you want. Most of this stuff is just utility and shoring up weaker spots of your build. But I will say, getting Rahir, you can get either a 15% increase to your resistances or a 15% increase to your armor, depending on which path you go down. That's actually very good for increasing your defenses. And getting your resistance and armor cap, especially in higher torment tiers, is actually really important. Now for our Paragon board, we're primarily going to be going over the board and glyph selection, but there'll be a build planner in the description if you want to follow point by point. I will say my Paragon boards are in no way optimized. I have redone them to try to get them a bit more optimized and shore up some of the spots I need, like armor or resistances. It's definitely not to the best point. On our starting board, we're using Tectonic, which will get some more earth crit damage. Once you get to Legendary, you'll get some more earth damage as multiplicative. One of the big reasons we're taking this is you gain 20% percent lucky hit chance for the secondary of this. That's the main reason we're taking it. Then the first board we're going to be taking is Earthen Devastation. Earth skills deal increased critical strike damage, increased by your damage versus crowd control, up to a max of 60%. So this is 60% multiplicative crit strike damage, very big. And then the glyph we're taking is Earth and Sky will give us damage to crowd control, more Earth skill damage. And the secondary effect, your nature skills deal increased damage to crowd control or vulnerable enemies. Then once you get it to legendary, your nature skills will deal more damage. Then and the next board we're taking is the Heightened Malice board. So while three or more enemies are poisoned nearby, you'll massively increase damage. And then the glyph we're taking is Fang and Claw. So this is another buff to magic nodes within range. So damage of poison enemies, some more damage, some more stats. The secondary is while in Werebearer Werewolf, close enemies take increased damage from you. And when this is legendary, we'll have more shapeshift damage. This is one of the glyphs that I may be changing out later down the road. And then the final board we're taking for now is Constricting Tendrils. We're not taking that legendary now node. And the current glyph we're taking is Headhunter. This is a buff to normal nodes within range, so just increase stats. Once you get it to legendary, increase damage. The secondary effect is increased damage to elites. So that's the main reason we're taking it. And as I mentioned, my boards are in no way optimized. Once I get more points, I'll probably completely redo these boards for this build, but they've been working out decently for me so far. But that brings us to our gear. And starting out with our gems, in your weapons, you want critical strike damage. In your armor, you're going to want increased willpower. And in your jewelry, you're going to want whatever is going to increase your resistances or your armor. I'm currently a bit over capped on armor, so I'll probably be switching some of these out for more resistance gems. But this heavily depends on what torment you're currently in, because going up in torment levels massively reduces your armor and resistances, so you need more of that. So that's all going to depend on what you're playing in and what your stats are at that point. And we already went over our uniques. Like mentioned, you don't need these. These are going to make the build better, but you can replace all of these uniques 
uniques, either defensive legendary aspects or just general damage increased legendary aspects. Like if you're not using either the Fist of Fate or the Mulenic Ring, just get the legendary aspect that increases your damage based on your Fortify. That'll give you a massive damage increase. And then for our runes, the current ones I'm using are Yule and Lack. So when I cast a skill with a cooldown, it gives me some amount of offering. And this offering rune is actually incredibly strong because all of our abilities are cooldown. And then when I get up enough offering, I invoke the Barbarian's Challenging Shout, which taunts all enemies, but gives us damage reduction. I think it's 40% damage reduction. And the mix of these two runes allows us to have Challenging Shout up a majority of the time when in combat. So this has been pretty good, especially if you need more defensives. Then for my other runes, we have a Knock and Zek, which when we inflict a crowd control that isn't slow or chill, we gain some amount of offering. And when we fill that up, we reduce our ultimate by two seconds. Now this is so strong because we have CC that's not slow or chill on most of our abilities. Our Trample can CC, our Poison Creeper immobilizes, our Storm Strike can immobilize, even our God Slayer Crown can do this. And then you can also get Tempering Rolls that can immobilize, freeze, or stun. This will actually reduce our ultimate cooldown by quite a lot. You'll constantly be procking that. But that brings us to probably the most important part of the build, and that's our legendary aspects. Now, starting off on our necklace, the most important one, when your Nature Fury key passive triggers a free skill, your non-ultimate cooldowns of the opposite type are reduced by up to nine seconds. Now, what this is, is our capstone. So when we cast, say, an Earth skill, it'll randomly cast a Storm skill for free. Whenever that procs, the opposite type gets its cooldown reduced. So we Storm Strike, when it gets a free skill, it'll reduce, say, our Trample skill. When we Trample, it'll reduce our Storm skills. So we're constantly just resetting our skills through this. Then for our other offensive aspects, which are also very important, Poison Creepers active also cast Landslide around you, and your Earth skills do increase damage of Poison enemies. So now Poison Creeper does this wave of Landslides around us. The first wave, we cast Landslide. Then our Trample now summons six Landslide Pillars of Earth during its duration. So we Trample, fills up the screen with Landslides. They deal up to 110% of normal damage, and Trample is now also a nature skill and an earth skill. This is important because now this can proc our free storm skills to reduce all of our cooldowns. And then finally, landslides earth pillars each strike a second time and deal more damage. So now when we cast poison creeper, it does a ring of landslides around us, does that twice. Same with trample, fills the whole screen with landslides, does it a second time. These three are how we cast our landslides and where a majority of our damage is coming from. Then for our other aspects, on our chest piece, basic skills grant damage reduction. We're constantly using storm strike, so more damage reduction. Reduction. On our legs, I currently have the aspect that after casting five basic skills, one of your active cooldowns is reduced by up to 2.5 seconds. This is because we cast Storm Strike so much, but you can use other defensive aspects here if you need it. In fact, getting up in a higher torment tiers, you may want an armor increasing legendary aspect here. Then on our boots, when you have Fortify, your Earth skills gain plus two ranks. This will be out majority of the time. This is just for a damage increase. And like mentioned, this build works with the legendary aspects we're using, and the uniques we're using are basically just for power or damage increases. So if you don't have these uniques, just fill those in with more general power increasing legendary aspects, and the build's still gonna work. You still should be fine going into Torment 1, Torment 2. You may need to optimize a bit more and start getting some uniques for Torment 3 or Torment 4. And like mentioned, this build is in no way optimized at this point, but it's still a really fun build. I always have fun using these poison landslide builds, getting all these constant ability resets, been pretty fun. And I think this is a build that is gonna require much more optimization. But I think once you get to the high-end optimization, this will be a decently strong build into, say, Torment 4. But that's all I wanna go over, so thanks for watching. Just wait a moment. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Just wait a moment.
ready yet. I must wait a moment. Not ready yet. I must wait a moment. I must wait a moment. Wait a moment. I'm not ready yet. 